with uh, Monty Tadier, deputy for St. Blood. He's involved in the option A campaign, the A team. Three options. What's wrong with the other two apart from option A? I think of the three options that have been put on the table by the Electoral Commission, A is the only one which passes all of the democratic tests, actually which were laid out by the Electoral Commission, strangely enough. Um, it gives voter equity, it means that no matter where you live in the island, your vote will be valued the same, whether you live in town, St Mary, uh, St Clement, St Helier, you'll all be able to vote for seven people, and you'll all have seven people representing roughly an equal size constituency. Option B completely skews that, because it keeps those super constituencies and then it places, distributes 12 uh, other seats within various different size constituencies and it would give a, a, a much uh, biased uh, balance towards the countryside, something which is unacceptable, I think, no matter where you live. Nobody has challenged the existing system so far at uh, Court of Human Rights or with the Privy Council, as far as I know. What makes you think they might challenge it after this election? This is an interesting question that's come up before. Um, the thing is with the status quo, I think it's been known in the background that something has had to have ch something has to change and I think there is a consensus now that the current system is broken, it's very complex, we have three types of states member, no one really knows why we have those three, some represent very small constituencies, others larger ones and some are elected on an island wide basis. Uh, it's not a very good system, that it's not user friendly, um, the consensus is that it needs to change. The Electoral Commission have recognised that. The sticking points are obviously with some of the traditionalists who want certain types of representation in the states versus those who, fa who favour uh, a more democratic and, and a fair distribution of seats. We know that uh, this government doesn't take international obligations too seriously, but uh, Senator Balash was noticeably concerned at the Electoral Commission meeting at the Town Hall when he'd obviously suddenly discovered about the international convention which required the 10% margin and so on. And he was uh, visibly shocked, I think, to have received that information. And it's obviously, as you say, it's written into the uh, recommendations. But it seems to be going on regardless. There's this B option and there's this C option, which won't improve things. It's a very strange set of circumstances, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is very strange. Um, you know, obviously, I'm very positive about the uh, referendum going ahead. I think that and I'm very putting my energy into campaigning for option A. Um, that doesn't mean that the Electoral Commission's recommendations and how they did it wasn't uh, an error, that it was a complete fudge. Uh, balls up, I don't think, is too strong a word. Um, but to use the, the cliche, we, we are where we are. Um, th what should have happened, really, is we should have decided a long time ago, do we have one class of states member? Do we say that the constable should no longer have an automatic seat in the states? That is the fundamental sticking point. I obviously brought that proposition to the states in 2009 because I recognised the fact that the constables was the big sticking point until we resolved that issue. Uh, it's now been conflated of course so we've got option B which purports to be the pro constable option. C of course would also um, keep the constables, would also keep the senators, would also keep the deputies. No change there. Um, a is the only one which says we, w we want one new type of states member so you'd be abolishing all three pre-existing types. You get rid of all the vested interests. I think that's the only way we can move forward. And you have a, a completely new uh, constituency which is created. For some of us who are interested in human rights and international obligations, the fact that the uh, Commission came out with a recommendation which is probably inevitably flawed in international terms is one thing. But the states then rubber stamped it and put it forward as the basis of a referendum. Now, if it has an inherent uh, flaw insofar as it cannot comply in B and C with international obligations, that uh, puts the states of Jersey in a rather strange position, doesn't it? I think that's true. And that's, of course, why the uh, referendum before it was passed was tr amended. It was an attempt to get it amended so that it only had one question should uh, option A essentially uh, that, that was uh, defeated but you know with, with significant support nonetheless uh, because referendums normally have uh, a yes and no answer. So the question is why on earth would you put something on the table which certainly doesn't meet best standard or even good international practice which is quite likely to be challenged at the Privy Council level and which is uh, very unlikely to even meet the basic human rights and that the European Court would set out. Um, I can't really answer that question. I think it's strange. I think because 
Um, those well, who, the referendum itself could even now be challenged at Privy Council level. I doubt if they'd respond quickly enough to have any uh, impact before the referendum takes place. But it, it's possible it could be uh, challenged presumably at this stage. Well, I think, you know, um, electoral reform is, is a tricky thing. It needs to be done by experts. And uh, we know what happened in 1948. Change only happened because of pressure from the UK. There was a threat that they would come in and actually re reform our system for us. And I think unless we get this right, uh, then the UK will have to step in again. And that's an embarrassing, potentially embarrassing situation in which to be. If you're considered to be a, an offshore finance centre, which is one of the best regulated in, in the world and has got a, a good reputation, we're told, why on earth take risks w with this? You know, um, if it was any other area. Of, of, uh, if it was the finance industry that was up for debate here, if, for example, you know, we were talking about our international obligations in finance, if it was a, another TIEA that we had to sign, this would be done very quickly, very efficiently, and a lot of effort and resources would be put into that. It's not, it's not just the numbers of people in districts who can vote in that arrangement, it's also the practicalities of running an election which feature in the international obligations. In one newspaper society, there are uh, obviously concerns about how uh, a referendum on any subject might be run, but uh, this particular referendum, which is about the nature of government, the uh, financing of uh, campaigns, these have been, uh, they were initially promised, as you know, Senator Ballard initially in indicated there would be funds available, then there was no funding available. Now one of the, can the uh, parties, uh, Senator Farnham's asking that there should be funding available. These sort of vaguenesses and uh, inequalities, these are all matters which uh, an international body like the Court of Human Rights would take into account, presumably. I think that's it, certainly if a decision needed to be challenged, um, you can be certain that all of these anomalies and all of these failures uh, will have been uh, logged by somebody somewhere and when the time comes, if necessary, uh, a letter will be written to the relevant body. There are also bodies that review uh, voting procedures. They go all over the world. Monitors are sent. Is anybody asking that monitors should be sent to review, to oversee the, the running of this referendum? It's an unusual thing for Jersey to be running. Is it, uh, has anybody invited them in? Um, I'm, I couldn't say for sure, but maybe we can expect to see a Barbados delegation appearing on our shores in the not-too-distant future. Well, they obviously are the experts in running elections, so we're told, so uh, that would be a very good idea, would it not? I, I, I'm sure Barbados were given an invite for the 24th of April to come over and, and look at how the um, parishes run their counting. Um, Honestly, I don't think there's a problem with the way in which we count. It's obviously going to be the first time we've used a transfer. Yeah, it's not just the count, though, is it? It's the whole running up to our referendum. It's the process by which the information's put out, who's funded, how they have access to the media, so that all the points of view... I mean, in this campaign, it's always been said A, B, and C are the, the official lines. Well, there could be other lines, but they've got no hope of being uh, funded, and they've got no space on the official literature that's going out. It's been a rather cosy little campaign, isn't it? You could say that. I mean, I think there are limitations in the way it's been run. There were three options on the on the ballot paper, and uh, I guess to play devil's advocate, the one good thing privileges and procedures have done is to create a booklet with space which will go to every home. That's obviously, if that were to be incurred by the uh, private individuals or the groups themselves, that that would perhaps be a stumbling block. So at least uh, there's a, a bare minimum being put out there in terms of uh, information. But yeah, you know, I think one should hold one's hands up and say that. Um, the Electoral Commission and privileges and procedures haven't uh, necessarily thought this through as well as they should. If uh, you're successful with your particular campaign, people should vote for A. Will there be a, a complaint to Strasbourg? On, will people, anybody else got a valid complaint against A? It's difficult to see because uh, ultimately A is whether you like it or not and there were lots of different ways in which you can have uh, electoral reform which is both fair. Uh, A works, it's been recommended by the Commission and I, I think it's recognised as being fair and democratic as far as is possible. It meets certainly the international obligations of the Venice Commission. It falls within the 10 to 15 percent margin of appreciation for the seats, something which the other two options certainly don't do. So it would be difficult to find grounds for appeal on that basis. Um, the, the concerning thing for me as a states member and possibly you know as a states member after 2014, that's not entirely a decision for me to make, um, but if I were around and my, my colleagues uh, and myself, we've got very big issues that we need to discuss about Jersey. We're facing, uh, as an island, we're facing you know, economic uncertainty, we've got housing issues, 
uh, environmental issues, there, there's lots going on, we need to talk about jobs for people and the risk is if we don't get this right now, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, we will be spending the next 10, 15 years arguing about states reform and quite frankly I don't think any of us wants to be in that position. We should be talking about the real issues that affect people's lives. Electoral reform is important but it's not something that we should allow to come back when we've got a perfect opportunity to actually solve the problem now, which is, I think, option A. Okay, thanks.